So like I said, we're looking at parametric surfaces today. They're going to have a little bit of a different form than the parametric surfaces that you've seen in the past. In the past, you've seen R of T, so uh, your surface is being defined in terms of T. Now R is defined in terms of U and V. So you'll have some function x of u, v times i, plus some function y of u, v times j, plus some function of z, or z of u, v times k. And we say that this is defined on some region d. So the graph of this would be called a parametric surface. So here's the idea. You have some region D that's in terms of U and V. So maybe that's D. Any point that you have in that region is going to be U comma V. R then will be when you graph this three-dimensionally in terms of X, Y, and Z. So we say that this is your surface S, and you're going to have some point. That point is R of UV. <coughs> Bless you. So first thing that we're going to have to be able to do is identify parametric surfaces. So when I give you a parametric equation, you're going to need to tell me what that looks like. We're going to need to be able to write parametric representations for various surfaces, and then tomorrow we'll talk about their areas. First example, we are going to identify and sketch a surface that has the following vector equation. It's going to be R of UV equals 2 cosine of u times i plus v times j plus 2 sine of u times k. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to split this up. x is 2 cosine of u, y is just equal to v, and z is equal to 2 sine of u. So these are called the parametric equations. Okay, there's not one way that you're going to go about this. If you're lucky, you'll see a pattern or a relationship of some kind. Any relationship we know between x and z, or anything they remind us of? A circle. So you should notice that x squared plus z squared, so if we were to square those, add them, what would we get? Definitely four. <laughs> Definitely four. OK, so that gives us a circle. Knowing that, what is this surface? Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Cylinder. <laughs> you don't have to be sorry. Yeah, it's a cylinder. <laughs> cylinder that goes along the y-axis. Hopefully yours looks better than mine does. Okay, so then questions naturally arise, what happens if we restrict u or v? What happens if we restricted v? Guys, when you go like this, it means nothing to me. What happens if we restrict V? Didn't I just tell you guys not to use your hands? <laughs> right, it's how long the cylinder is. So when you guys say restrict the cylinder, that's not specific enough. If we restrict V, that restricts the height of the cylinder. What happens if we restrict U? Like, what if u was between 0 and pi over 2? Only a quarter of the cylinder. It, it would be only a quarter of the cylinder. 
Okay. I'm not going to give you anything too complicated. Your book and your homework wanted you to graph a bunch of these using a calculator, which I thought was kind of stupid. And so we're just going to skip that. Sound good? Mm -hmm. So you're not going to have to do that. Okay. But I do expect you to be able to identify surfaces like that. So here's the next one I want you to identify. My suggestion again would be that you split these up. We have x equals u squared, y is equal to u cosine v, z is equal to u sine of v. Okay, anything interesting that we notice? Johnny? Good. So y squared plus z squared is going to be equal to u squared. We also, though, notice that u squared is equal to x. So we get y squared plus z squared equals x. What is that? I was kind of hoping you were going to say helix again. <laughs> it's a paraboloid. Remember how I told you guys that you actually needed to know those and it wasn't just one section you couldn't forget them? <laughs> that would make sense then. Okay. So hopefully you can see it's just kind of like an intuition thing. It's not some it's not going to be the same every time. Does that make sense? What I'm trying to say? Okay, I also want us to be able to write parametric representations, so that's what we're going to do next. find a parametric representation of, we're going to do three different ones. First one is the sphere x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals a squared. Ideas? We have parametrically represented spheres before. I'm just looking for one word. What? Spherical. Yes, we're going to use spherical. <laughs> In this case, rho is going to be equal to a. So we'll have x equals a, what's the rest? Sine phi cosine theta. Good. Sine phi cosine theta. y is equal to a. Sine phi sine theta. Sine phi th sine theta. And z is equal to a cosine phi. I would really appreciate or like you to give some parameters here. So phi, what are the bounds on phi? Zero to pi. Zero to pi. So that is our phi. Theta is zero to two pi. So then if you wanted to look at what D looked like, if you were to graph D. Next one. 
z equals x squared plus 2y squared. Ideas. Not overthink it too much. Ready? We let x equal x, y equal y, z then will be equal to x squared plus 2y squared. If you don't like that, you can do u, v, u squared plus 2v squared, if that's better for you. So then if you're asked for a, a vector representation, so that's the parametric representation, the vector representation would be r of xy is equal to xi plus yj plus x squared plus 2y squared. Okay, okay one thing to know. This representation is not unique. This is just one possibility. Okay. Last thing before we move on. Z equals 2 times the square root of x squared plus y squared. Before we represent this, figure out our representation. I want to know what that looks like if we were to graph it. Cone. Yeah, it's the top part of the cone, so it's not a double cone, it's just the top part. Okay, there are actually two ways that we can represent this, or two easy ways. First one, you should definitively be able to come up with. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, that's not the one I really wanted. But yes, we will talk about that one in a minute. Yeah, the same thing that we just did. X equals X, Y equals Y, Z equals two times the square root of X squared plus Y squared. So then like Johnny said, we also can do cylindrical which case x is r cosine theta, y is r sine theta, z, that's r, so z is just 2r. Okay. Questions before we go on? No, we're good so far? Okay. One thing I haven't told you about, but the book, your homework might ask you about, I don't know, so we should probably talk about it real quick. Going back to A. Sometimes you'll be asked to find what are called grid lines. What a grid line means is what happens when you hold one of the variables constant. So if we were to hold phi constant, or if we were to hold theta constant. If we were to hold phi constant, looking up here, what would we get? So if we choose a single value for phi, Are you all staring at me? Look up there. I'm not going to give you the answer. If we hold phi constant, that'll just be a number. So we will have a set height. This is going to be a number times cosine of theta. This will be the same number times sine of theta. A circle. Yeah, a circle at a certain height of z. So anytime you hold phi constant, do you see that you're going to get a bunch of different circles that are all parallel to the xy plane? Okay. So 
the phi grid lines then are circles that are parallel to the xy plane. Okay, theta constant is more difficult. Don't everyone talk at once. These are also going to be circles that connect what are called the north and south poles. So they're going to be XZ circles and YZ circles. So this is what I mean. This is from your book. Can you guys see that? So the phi grid lines, those are the ones we already talked about. You see a circle parallel to the XY plane. Theta is equal to some constant. We'll connect the other way. just the specific line. So like I said, I don't know that it's in your homework, but now you've seen it at least in case it is. Okay. Great. Let's move on. Next thing I want to talk about is surfaces of revolution. Okay, let it, let's consider rotating the line y equals f of x, or not the line, the curve y equals f of x, about the x-axis. Okay. So let's say that our y equals f of x is something like this. And then we are going to revolve that about the x-axis. When we do, we'll get something like this. Can you picture that? Kind of like a blowhorn-ish? Yes? Okay. Parametrically, here's how we would represent that surface. x is going to be equal to x y is equal to f of x times the cosine of theta and z is equal to f of x times the sine of theta and theta is between 0 and 2 pi. This should intuitively make sense when you plug your x value in that's going to give you like the size of the circle. You should see if you cut through here, you're always going to get a circle. That's what this is. F of x tells you the radius of the circle, which will come from your surface. So we are going to find parametric equations for the surface generated by rotating y equals sine of x. I'm telling you that x is between 0 and 2 pi about the x-axis. Okay, using this above, we know that x is going to be equal to x, y is going to be equal to f of x, cosine of theta, this is our f of x, 
So we get sine of x cosine of theta. Z is equal to f of x, in this case sine of x times sine of theta. We were told that x has to be between 0 and 2 pi. And then from above, we know that theta has to be between 0 and 2 pi. Questions on surfaces of revolution? No, I know that this section is kind of random. It's all over the place. So we're gonna move away from surfaces of revolution and talk about tangent planes now. Very exciting, I know. Okay, so the idea is that we wanna find the equation of a tangent plane to a parametric surface, the surface of which is traced out or represented by the following. It's what we wrote earlier, r of u v, x is some function of u and v times i, add y is some function of u and v times j, and then add z. And we want to find that tangent plane at some point we call P naught. P naught is the point that corresponds to R of U naught and V naught. The idea is that we are going to look at the grid curves and that's what I wrote in blue earlier that we talked about what happens when you hold one of the variables constant. So if we hold V constant, what we can do is we can find R of V. So R of V then would be the partial of X with respect to V at the point U naught V naught times I. Partial of Y with respect to V at the point U naught V naught times J. And then same thing with Z. We're also going to do the same thing with you, and I'll show you a picture in a minute that tells you why this makes sense or where it's going to take us. So this will be all the same except with you this time. Geometrically, here's what we're looking at. We have some surface. We have our point. First thing we have is we have two grid lines. So when we hold U and V constant. So that's one of them. That's the other one. So then what happens is, if we find R of U and R of V, those are going to be the tangent lines 
along those grid lines at the given point. So this one might be R of V, this one might be R of U, So our tangent plane then is going to contain both of those vectors. Now what do we need to write the equation of a tangent plane? A point and a vector. What kind of vector? A normal vector. How would we find a normal vector in this case? the point we have, how would we find the normal vector? That's very right. Say it louder. That wasn't any louder. <laughs> Cross them. Right? Cross product. How do you anytime find a vector that's normal or perpendicular to other vectors? You cross them. Okay, a quick note. If when you do that, you don't get the zero vector, your surface S is called smooth. What I mean by smooth is that it has no corners. So our example, we are going to find the tangent plane to the surface with parametric equations x equals u squared, y equals v squared, and z equals u plus 2v at the point one, one, three. Okay, so we need to find R of U and R of V. R of U will be two U, zero, one. R of V will be 0, 2 V, and 2. Okay, we need to cross these. Don't cross them yet. You can, but it's more work, so I, don't, I would suggest you don't. What do you think we should do before we cross these two? Would it be helpful if we knew u and v? Then we could plug u and v in, then we're crossing two vectors that have just numbers and no variables. How are we going to find what u and v are? Yeah, looking at the point that you have. If you plug 1 and 1 into u squared and v squared, u and v are positive or negative 1. But then when we consider that 3, that tells us that u equals 1 and v equals 1. Okay, so plug that in. So if we plug in 1, 1, we get 2, 0, 1. To R of V, if we plug in 1, 1, we get 0, 2, 2. <coughs> then we are going to cross these. we do we get 0 minus 2 4 minus 0 but then switch the sign 4 minus 0 do you guys agree with me okay remember that you can divide out a constant if you want to so I would divide out negative 2 so that we get 1 2 negative 2 you don't have to but 
That's what I would do. So then the equation of our tangent plane becomes the following. 1 times the quantity x minus 1 plus 2 times the quantity y minus 1 minus 2 quantity v minus 3 equals 0. I prefer if you multiply everything out and combine like terms. When you do, you get y, sorry, x add 2y, subtract 2z, plus 3 equals 0. Okay, questions on parametric surfaces.